Hey, welcome back to the Culture Shock Africa podcast. Uh, as always, please do subscribe if this is your first time. Click the like button, smash the like button, drop a comment, and let us know how you have enjoyed the content that we're bringing to you. Uh, my name is Pastor Mpangwe here, and my aim is to bring content that inspires people in their faith, but also in their purpose and in their calling. Today, we have a special young man. Um, if you are from Zambia, you probably see his work all over uh he's probably all over all over the place uh been doing a lot of amazing work i was joking with him that he went and sold his years in dubai recently uh (laughs) and he's back uh so so please ladies and gentlemen welcome to the culture shock podcast my man tony davis tony please make some noise and greet the people what's up tony how you doing thank you very much thanks for inviting me uh it's a pleasure being here Right, 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 right. (laughs) Exactly, exactly. Tony, you're telling me that this is the first interview you've done in about four years, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I usually uh, turn them down. I don't want to be in front of the cameras. I don't, somehow I feel like I'm camera shy as well. And I don't want people to know me like that. Right. So I want people to know more of my works than me. So, right, right. Pretty much that's why. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, 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 Tony, if, if you don't mind, start off by telling the people what it is, what it is that you do, like what you're about, and what your main, you know, business and everything is. Okay, uh, right now I'm, I can say I'm a businessman because uh, apart from photography, there yeah, are some other business that I do. But uh, yeah, pretty much it. I'm uh, a portrait and uh, commercial photographer. All right, all right, right. Tony, how did you get into photography? Like, what was your entry? I mean, that's not like a Zambian career. How did you enter into photography, and when did you know, okay, this is what I want to do? Okay, I think it goes back to 2015, because that's when I started photography. Uh, but before that, I used to paint and, and draw. But uh, there's a time I used to do graphics as well, within the same year, like computer graphics. So there's, you know, our Facebook is, there's this lady who, who texts me on Facebook saying, do you do uh, wedding shorts and whatnot? Mm. And, you know, jokingly, I thought she's just one of those people on Facebook who comment and say whatever, uh, because she was from Solwezi as well, because when I looked at her profile, she was from Solwezi, I was like, ah, it's just people who make noise. Then I, I, I agreed to say <laughs> yes, I do shoot. Right. <laughs> uh, before that, I never held a camera. I never shot anything, you know? Mm. Then she says, how much do you charge? Then just out of my head, I said uh, a certain amount. I don't want to mention. But it was quite an, uh, a big amount. Mm. And she says, okay, send me your account details. Then uh, I will send you the app deposit and the other deposit when you come. I was like, oh, okay. I gave her my account detail. After, uh, I think, two days or so, I just noticed a notification on my phone to say, this much has been deposited in your account. <laughs> and sh- my stomach started grumbling. <laughs> And I've never shot a wedding before. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. I've never shot a wedding before. Yeah. And she paid like uh, a month and weeks before the wedding. Right. So then I started YouTube, you know. I started uh, looking up for these things and I discovered that they are quite expensive, like cameras and lighting. Right. Then the money that, compared to the money that she paid me, I was just like, ish, I'm doomed, you know. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but I, I think the first thing that I did was, was buying a small camera uh, with the money that she paid mm. then uh, when I wanted the lighting I think what I did was I bought this a, a black umbrellas and painted them silver inside mm. then bought these frozen tubes then hired them into the light they were, they were producing good lights it wasn't the best but it was, it was workable right yeah uh, the day came I went to Solezi I shot I shot the wedding came back when I was giving them the pictures I was even scared to say these people will take me to police because they, they paid them <laughs> good money and I don't, I'm not sure what I've done, eh? <laughs> but surprisingly, they love them. And they said, no, my sister's getting married next month again, so how much are you going to charge us since mm. we're, we're returning time? So give us a discount. I was like, what? Then they sent the money again. I was like, okay, this is uh, <laughs> right. this is way of getting good money, you know? Mm. And from then, that's how I picked it up. Then uh, I started learning. Then I, I, I think I started doing more of what I love doing that rather than waiting Hold on, hold on. So what you're so, saying is you got into this career by accident. By accident. <laughs> there was just a, an opportunity that presented itself and I, I grabbed it. Right, right, right. I mean, speaking of opportunities yeah. and stuff, um, mm-hmm. you've managed to work with some of the, you know, um, high profile, 
you know, not just cele- yeah. celebrities and so on and so forth. Talk to us and mm-hmm. especially talk to young young photographers because I think that you're one of the main guys out there in the industry right now. How do they pursue yeah. opportunities and how how have you managed to you know grab some of these opportunities to push your brand out there? Okay, uh, for me, I think what what helped me was was first I I, I started uh, learning more of what I wanted to mm. do, which is uh, studio photography. Mm. So uh, when when I think I, I became a bit good, I'm not saying I'm all that, but when when I think I, I became good, Maki too, who's um, who's been a friend for so many years, uh, reached out to me and said, you know what, uh, I think your pictures are good. Let's let's start doing something. Mm. So I started shooting. I, I became like his personal photographer for some time, mm. and and you know he's a big guy and so in, uh, he's so influential. So other celebrities wanted to. Just to to have this photographer who is um, a personal photographer as well. Mm. Then from then that's how the, yeah, the business has started building up, right? Pretty much, right? And, yeah. and and what is the kind of like the relationship between you and and some of these? So basically, it was you building a relationship and through a relationship that some of these opportunities came, that's right? right? Yeah. How important mm-hmm. has it been for you to to build relationships, and how does one in the industry make relationships? That can grow the business. Well, you know, uh, like I said, it was me. It came from one artist mm. who who believed in me and liked what I did. Mm. And from then, other celebrities also wanted to to work with me mm. because because they saw how I worked with him. You know what I mean? Right. So, uh, uh, basically, that's that. Just uh, do your good job. Uh, be the best at what you do then these people will always follow you because you know how celebrities are they always want to brand themselves in a certain way right so if you're doing a good job they would always want to 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 to, to work with you I remember the, the last time I was shooting uh, Shafi's uh, album Amnesia right so, no 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 Bon Appetit mm. Bon Appetit the, the, the recent album yes the recent album right yeah, yeah this photographer I won't mention this Mm. I'm not saying the other photographer was bad or anything, no. Mm. He had this photographer that he usually works with. Mm. But when it came to the album, he called me to say, oh, we need to do this and that. So I was like, ah, but what happened? What, what's happening to the other photographers? You don't want to work with them. Then he said, you know, when I'm coming to you, just know that it's something serious. You know mm. what I mean? Mm. That's what he said. So it clicked in my mind to say, okay, so I've, I've, I've maybe presented myself in a way that when someone is working with me, they know it's all about serious work. Right. So, yeah. So, yeah, just just being good at what you do, you know, give these people a good service. And, yeah. And, move around. and people will always yeah. follow. I think that one of the things I like to ask, especially my guests, is what advice can they give, you know, up and coming people in the industry? Because I'm pretty sure you watch and you look and you say, okay, these guys have talent, but maybe this is what they need to improve on. Like, what are, what are some of the the, the the tips that you can give to say look you got the gift you got the capacity but it's a lot more mm-hmm. than just being gifted what are some of the things that they need to know to say this is how you take your your brand to the next level I think the first thing is not to be comfortable and uh, just discovering what you're really good at mm. like for me I know I enjoy apart from anything else I think I, I enjoy shooting in the studio because I'm able to control light and whatnot. So, if any photographer, any upcoming photographer, want to be like uh, the best at what they do, they need to discover what they they really enjoy and what they are good at. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Yeah, because even even I haven't shot a wedding like in I don't know a year or two. My right. assistant uh, does that because I realized to say I'm not so good with these things. Right. But because I don't know if it's a Zambian setup or the Zambian market, mm-hmm. whatever you post. A nice picture. A client will come to you and ask if you do the other thing. You know what I mean? Mm. They won't. Uh, they won't hire you to do the things that you are advertising. Mm, mm, but mm. it's okay. You can't say no to money at the end of the right. day. Right. But I think it's 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 uh it's important to discover what you like and uh work on it, improve on it. Then business will flow that way. Right. You I think that's what I've done. You've talked about your team. Like, how many are you with your team right now, and how has it been like building your team? I have uh, three guys. There's one videographer, there's one photographer, then another person who just does the administration and whatnot. It's 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 uh it's quite hard building a team, especially here where everyone wants to be there. 
the guy in front. You know what I mean? Mm. They always want to be this photographer that is known and whatnot. But uh, I think I'm 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 lucky enough, or I'm blessed enough to have these guys that are willing to push the brand forward. They've, they've come on board and uh, they've really been great. Right, right, right. You we we talked about earlier on. Uh, you know, you know, photography being expensive right like that's no lie like for anybody out there they just think it's a joke but i'm like photographers are millionaires like i'm telling you photographers are straight up if if a photographer tells you photographer or videographer shows you the cost of what they have you'll be like this guy should have houses right I'm like, telling you, I would, you could have been driving expensive cars, right? <laughs> <laughs> right i mean yeah. at the point you realize this is expensive right all right, mm-hmm. and because I'm talking to some people out there that are working with what they have, how mm-hmm. have you managed, you know, to work through? What are the, some of the sacrifices you've had to make, you know, just to push this business forward? I think uh, uh, from the get go, I think after I realized to say this is how uh, the photography or the art industry works in Zambia, I realized to say if, if I'm going to invest something in a business, then it will just be something that I really want. Because at the end of the day, you need to be in a situation where you need to produce work that you are satisfied with. You know what I mean? Mm. Not not doing something just because uh, you've invested 15,000 and you want to get 30,000 of it. Mm. Maybe the Zambia mm. setup, you, mm. won't, you won't manage to do mm. that. So th- there are times when uh, even my assistant knows, my, my immediate assistant, he knows where there are times when we want to buy maybe just a light, which is costing maybe a thousand dollars. Then we say, okay, what are we going to do uh, this month? Okay, the money that we're going to make from weddings and whatnot, from uh, studio photo shoots and whatnot, we're going to challenge to just buying that light. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you even stop going to certain places, stop eating out, you stop doing these things because you want to have that uh, amount and buy the light. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm. So it's 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 a it's it's a very expensive industry, like you said. And in Zambia, if you're going to invest in the business and hoping you're going to get something in return, it's a lie. You just need to invest and get <laughs> and get the results that you want. Right, you know I mean? right, right, yeah. right, right. Because, because because there are things like just hold on. Yeah. Just hold on. There are things like uh, like this. I don't see many photographers doing using this. This is a graphics tablet. I don't I don't think I've come across any. I don't mm. know any mm. photographer who does. This, this costs around six thousand just for this. Wow! And it's it's not like I'm I'm investing this so that uh, I can get some money in return. No, but I want when I'm editing pictures, I'm satisfied with the results. That's why I bought this. You know what I mean? Right, 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 right. Yeah. So, so the investment so, is for the results. You whatever it's results. For the results. Mm. The results that you're satisfied with. That's why, to some extent, when you start the photography business, it's it's not all about uh, being an artist or whatnot. There's also this uh, uh, the artist side of you that you need to to consider. Mm. It's not all about business, but there's this artistic side of you where uh, you need to have tools that are going to give you the results that you are satisfied with. Right. Not necessarily business aspect of things right right speaking about business i mean you talked about it being zambia right um and this is big facts um i'm yeah. sure there's some people when they when you give them a price they'll be like what else do you do do you save people's lives like <laughs> <laughs> i love you know and, and, and you know way back such things used to get to me you know sometimes it used to force me to bend towards what uh being uh, towards what the client wants to pay you, you know what I mean? Mm. But after some time, I, I realized to say, you know, if I'm giving something to the client and if they value it that much, so what can they pay this much for this thing? You know what I mean? Mm. So, 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 yeah, you, you come across clients who are going to say it's expensive, the, the prices are ridiculous and whatnot. But imagine, there are people, like, especially outside Zambia, like the photographer that I, I worked with, mm. we were shooting from from 4 to 3 p.m. Mm. and he made 12,500 dirham. That's 200 pin Zambian kwacha in just one day. Mm. And, and he was using the equipment similar to what I have, but are there uh, clients who can pay that much? <laughs> right, right. 
Right, 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 right. And 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 speaking of external, I mean, I understand hundred uh, percent. You've just come back from uh, from the UAE, yeah. right? You just came back from Dubai. Um, speak to us about your experience in in the UAE and how it broadened your mindset. Okay, I think one one of the first things that I that I learned when I got there is is that. Uh, you as a photographer, you can't do everything alone. Mm. And, and also the importance of having a team that's, that's going to uh, help you push uh, or get the results that you want because right. you can't do everything alone. Even, even creativity, I think you, you run out to a, a certain limit. You can't think outside the box. You become creativity, uh, creativity block. Mm. So I think what, I le- what I learned the most is, is that you, you need to have this team that's dedicated to... Uh, push the brand forward. Right. That's why I've, I've yeah, I've, I've been planning on adding a few people to my team because I'm I'm opening a new studio in the next few weeks. Right. I'm opening a new studio, so I want, I want to have a creative uh, designer, I want to have a stylist and whatnot. So that when the client comes in and they want to shoot with us, I'll factor in these people and give them a cut. If they don't want, I think it's it's well and good. Right. Uh, the other right. people are willing to pay, so mm. yeah, in the long run they'll start paying. Right, right, right. Yeah. So anyway, it was it was, really good. It was it was a different experience altogether. Right. But I, I learned quite a lot. Right. And and how can uh, how, what what what's you, what in your eyes will it take for us to begin to you know branch out into the international market? You just talked about what you were able to earn or what the photographer was able to earn in the UAE versus here, and. Mm-hmm. Our mm-hmm. mindset always has always been, oh, in Zambia, 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 and I hear that a lot. And and I'm not being disrespectful. It is a it is a fact, yeah. you know. But how mm-hmm. do you start yeah. breaking international barriers? And what in your eyes did you see out there? That say, okay, this is what we need to do in order for us to become, you know, international. Yeah, like like I said, it's uh, it's all about planning these things, mm. uh, planning and, and also. Uh, advertising yourselves, people will always uh, get in touch with you. Like the people that I work with will mm. also contact with me through Instagram. Wait, wait, wait. They, they, so they hit you up think, through Instagram? Uh, yeah. Nah, fam. <laughs> you mean you... I'm, I'm telling you. No. <laughs> no. They followed yeah, you through, through Instagram. Instagram and they were like, yo, you need yeah. to come up to Dubai, blah, 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 through Instagram. Uh, that's how you... Through Instagram. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So I think that's the way to go. We need we need to start planning and thinking uh, big. Like one thing I noticed about most Zambian, even clients and whatnot, they, they don't want to invest in their uh, branding. Mm. I, I was talking to a certain lady when I when I just came back because mm. I noticed to say what she does. I think if we were to do this and that, it can go around mm. so I, I i i contacted her to say listen this is what i have in mind mm. I, I gave her the details and the plan that i have mm. so we're gonna use this number of models we're gonna do this and that and that i gave her a cost to say this is how much you need to spend. it was it, it was not even too much i think in in my own terms mm. compared to the work that that was supposed to give her back mm. but she said no it's too expensive and i use my my friends as models, I was just like, this is what that is. <laughs> because imagine if, if you are advertising a product, especially right. like beauty, cosmetics, or fashion, right? If, if you're going to use your friends who are not professional models, how are people going to take this? Yes. How are you going to put the billboards of, 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 of MAC lipstick with, with just their friends on? You, know? you need to use professional models who know what they're supposed to do. Right. Then from then, I think, that's how, I think because of the amount that I gave her, the deal, I think it, it, it won't go through. So it's still, <laughs> but I, I, I'm still pushing. I, I'm still talking to a few people, letting them know what we can do and how much they can spend. But also, the most important thing, uh, what they're going to get in return. But I think right. Zambia is, is just, but then we, we keep trying. Because right. there, there's some people that are working with in Dubai. Like mm. I said, they were like the first people to open a modeling agency in Dubai. Mm. So it wasn't pretty, it wasn't pretty easy for them when they were starting. But now they make big money. They have models even as far as uh, the US, 
We have some in Italy, France, South Africa, Nigeria, and whatnot. You right. Know what I mean? Right. Yeah. So it, it won't be easy, but eventually some people will start thinking outside the box and they'll start appreciating art. Right. But in general, art here is not really appreciated. Right. Compared to that side. Because right. When, when, when you're that side, when they just hear that you're a photographer, they give you they give you much respect. You know what I mean? Mm. When you tell them, so we're going to wrap up in the next three minutes, you wrap up in the next three minutes. There's nothing like, no, give us time and whatnot. If you don't do that here, they go on Facebook and they say you are rude. You know what I, mean? <laughs> I hear you, Tony. Now, um, let, let, I I mean, let's talk about, uh, you know, the future, right? I mean, we're living in times now yeah. where... Uh, photography as amazing as it is you have you know technology coming out um, and these days some phones depending on the level of lighting can produce great pictures yeah all right yeah the the, the, the iphone 12 pro max and the samsung s20 whatever <laughs> doing the thing eh? what's the future of you know creative industries such as photography in line with technology and how do we prepare ourselves, you know? Because let me tell you why I say that. Because some mm-hmm. years back, studios like yours yeah. were not there, right? You had yeah. to go to yeah. all those ones in town to get pictures. You had to, you know? <laughs> and most of those guys yeah. are out of business now. Or if not, they're really struggling. So let's talk of technology, the future, and how do we position ourselves in that way? Okay. I, I think... Uh, Technology will continue uh, just getting better. Even uh, the camera qualities of these phones will continue uh, getting better. But I think the, uh, photography won't won't die, as they say. Maybe it will, but maybe it can, but not now. Because mm. I feel, you know, it's, there's a big difference between the sensor that they put in these cameras and the sensors that they put in in those uh, DSLRs or mirrorless cameras that we use. In that. If you're doing something professional, I don't think you can use a phone, right. regardless of what you can use a phone. Because these cameras, they can say they have, uh, I don't know, 20-something megapixels or 40-something megapixels, mm. and use a DSLR that's like uh, 12 megapixels. Right. But if you are to blow something, if you are to, going to print something, if you're going to uh, put it on a website that's going to last for some time, you can't use something that's done with a phone. Mm. So and for me, what I think is, unless they start putting sensors, the same sensors that they put in cameras, they start putting them in phones, and right. also adding lens, those lenses. Right. If they do that, then the, the quality will obviously be the same. But I think it's 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 uh it's it's kind of scary to some extent because when when people get too comfortable with just having pictures taken on the phone, then eventually it might be out of business. But there'll be also the other part of, 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 of the industry that will always need professional photographers. Because I, I was, like I said, photography is not all about just having a clear picture or whatnot. There's mm. an artistic side too. So someone needs to be an artist for you to be a good photographer. Right, right. So the art behind the photography, it will be very integral in the future. Very, very yeah. in the future, mm-hmm. right? Because I think, yeah. I think that's a very powerful lesson that you've given there to say to stay relevant, mm-hmm. you still have to remain artistic and, you know, be a trendsetter, yeah. you know? Otherwise, yeah. otherwise, to some, mm-hmm. then if you're just doing what everyone else is doing, they're going to die. Yeah, they're going to make you relevant they're very, very soon, them. you know? Yeah, true. You know, speaking, yeah. Of, speaking of innovation, Right. Let's talk about the showroom. Right. Tell sure. us about your <laughs> idea behind the showroom and how did that come about? Okay. I, th- I think we we started the showroom when uh, when Corona was was at, at its peak. You know, like everything was was done. We're not shooting as much. Then uh, there's this show in in Germany. It's called Color. Right. So we saw it on on YouTube. Mm. Then I was like, you know, we can actually do this for the Zambian uh, musicians and whatnot. Mm. So I reached out to a few musicians that I was, I was close to. Uh, there's a guy called Tinilas, the raps in Tonga. I'm not sure if you know him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was, he was the first person I, I called because he stays near my house and also he's been a friend for some time. Mm. Then I was like, you know, let's do something. So after we posted that, ish, like everyone was just calling now. Mm. I also want someone feature. Even now people still uh, call. But it's just that now we are, we are on old since we want to... To, to 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 take it to the new studio, right, right, right. But yeah, it should have been great. Right, right. I I always joke around, um, and I think I've said that to you 
Um, I mm-hmm. had never heard of uh, Chandana K, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Before and that, I had never heard of Chandana K, and I and I saw a few of their clips on on uh, the showroom. What's it sure. like being part of such you know uh, fresh talents? You know, emergence in the industry, and to see their video, I think it's gone over a million views on YouTube, yeah. right? It got a million. I don't know if it's three weeks or so. It was crazy. I'm telling you. What's it like for you being a part of such a process, and to see such an idea excel? You know, it's 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 been amazing. In that, uh, uh, I think it it uh, it helps a lot of artists being known there. Even when I chanted a key, I don't think they were as big as they are before the showroom. Right. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not saying I'm the one who made them big or anything. Because right. I think they were already heading there. Right. But I think it was amazing in, in that they were just heading towards their stardom and were also part of it. Mm. You know, we helped them push the, the brand forward. So it was it was really amazing. It was really good. I think we, we started at the right time and really worked out for all. Right, right. And and is that a future direction for you, Tony? I mean, are you seeing yourself head, uh, heading out into content creation? Yeah, as, uh, especially this year, uh, and that's why we've 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 moved from the previous studio. That's why we're moving to the new one, because we want to to to, to have a space where we can create a lot of things rather than just sticking to photography and and, and maybe graphics and video that we do. So we are heading towards that direction, content creation. Right. I've partnered up with a uh, uh, few other guys like Tivo and Emily, and there are other guys from entertainment as well. Uh, we're coming uh, together to create uh, a place where we can create content for the different uh, artists and uh, aspects of uh, the industry. All right, man. A few more questions from me, right? Who inspires you? Mm. Tell us your inspirations. Uh, who inspires me? I think the first, uh, the first, the first person that, that comes to mind is there's a guy called Carl Taylor. Is a photographer based in uh, in England. I think I'm, I'm I'm the number one fan. I don't know. He's he's really good. And when I when I reached out to him the first time, I thought he won't respond because he's this big guy. He shoots for Rolex. He shoots for Chanel. He shoots for Mac. He shoots for these big brands. Mm. And uh, surprisingly, he responded. I think for me, is like the biggest inspiration. Mm. And then the second is. I don't know where I'm from. I don't want to go back, so <laughs> I have to work. <laughs> right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so, uh, and, and what keeps you growing? You know, in the industry, what what pushes you to keep on getting better? I think the fact that when I wake up in the morning, I feel like I don't know anything. Like I need to learn something every day. So I think that what pushes me forward, because I feel like I'm not I'm not at the level where I want to be. So. That's what pushes me. Where do you want to be? I don't know, man. <laughs> I just want to keep learning. Then we'll see. Right. When I get to, to a certain comfortable uh, space or stage, and I'll say, uh, okay. Right. So, you, right. so for you, you're a real student right of the now, game, eh? I'm still learning. Right. That's why, that's why most people reach out to me and say, can you teach me? Can, can you order a photography class and whatnot? But I feel like I don't know much as well. Mm. So that's why I feel like there's, there's this constant need to learn every day. Right, right, right. And Tony, tell us five years from now, where do you see yourself? I don't know, bro. Like, honestly, I don't know. <laughs> like, five years ago, I didn't know. Or six years ago, actually. Now, I didn't know I'm going to be a photographer. So I don't know. I thought I'm going to be a businessman doing some business things somewhere. So I don't know. Right. And, and you know, of late, I think I've, 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 I've become more of a businessman than, than a photographer. Mm. So I don't know where I'm gonna go in the next five years, but anyway, I'm sure it's gonna be big or good. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's dope. And, and, and tell yeah. and, and you obviously yeah. you um uh, you've built your own or you're working on your studio um and you've built that over time. Mm-hmm. Um, give somebody advice yeah. like how can they work towards you know building that kind of a setup? What does it take? Uh, first thing first, you need to know what you really want. Is, mm. is, is, uh, uh, because studio space is quite expensive, mm. especially if you're going to invest in a lot of these lights or mm. not. 
it's quite expensive. Rentals as well, quite high. You know Lusaka, you know how Lusaka is expensive. So the first thing is just knowing what you really want. Mm. And also uh, think about if it's really worth it. Because mm. you can't just have a space and just leave it blank without you know, having it, it's, it's, it's bringing money on your side. Right. So you really need to know what you want. Then you can start. It's, 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 you can't always start from the top. Like I, I remember, like I said, the first lights that I had, mm. I just had mint them. Like I had, I had bought umbrellas and painted them silver inside and started using them. Then after some time, when I made some money, I bought this light, I bought the other light, then it kept on growing. So someone really needs to know what they want and they can start from there. All right. So, quick three questions. What's your most expensive piece of equipment? Right now? Mm, I think my camera is because my, my camera is like 45 as of now like 45,000 Quacha dollars just to be holds. sure Quacha I think okay okay 45 should be 45 45 46 somewhere there so Tony shoots with a vit everyone whoever wants to know that <laughs> <laughs> and then we're followed by the lens which we post around 26,000 as of now Wow. wow! 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 That's quite a bit of investment. <laughs> what? Another, another twenty. Uh. It's, it's quite, quite a light which is costing a thousand dollars. Maybe two lights actually. If we're right. shooting also, and we're shooting three lights. So, right. Three by six. And what is your most memorable moment in the industry so far? The most recent one, of course. <laughs> The Dubai trip, right? I was laughing when you were busy posting at Samfia. <laughs> this guy, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know how it is when, when some, somebody travels out. They always tag the places that they have, they have been to. So I thought, you know, why can't they be different and tag the places back home? <laughs> right, 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 right. Okay. So when they see the Burj Khalifa, they will know that oh, it's Dubai. So why yeah. say you are in Dubai? So say you are in, you are in Zambia or something. <laughs> right, right, right. And what is your motto or phrase that you live by? Mm. I've never thought about that actually. Mm. <laughs> That's a tough one. Eh? I've never thought about that. Mm. I think it's just work hard. That's all. Right, 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 right. Speaking of mm -hmm. hard work, I think people don't know how hard photography. Like, I've, I watch you sometimes. You are up like in the wee hours, like finishing yeah, off work. Yeah, like, and, and you know, for me, what I normally do is is, is that if I have a shoot in them uh, during the day, then I edit in the night. So maybe sometimes you see me. I'm online maybe at four or three. So I don't know. There's just something about me, and I don't like editing pictures during the day. So I feel more comfortable uh, editing in the night. Right, right, and, right. And uh, most people won't see that. But uh, anyway, it is what it is. Right. But yeah, so you work in the day, then you sleep late in the night, and you wake up early in the morning the following day. So it's, it's kind of mm. hard. Yeah. One last yeah. question. One last question. All right. You've been a part of so many concepts um, and mm. events, videos, and whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I remember talking to Chumwasu about uh, uh, talking about you, um, and I think he talked to me about you know some of the things that you've done, and so did um, uh, EMR. He talked about the yeah. uh, the impressions. What's one of your most mm -hmm. memorable concepts um, that you've been a part of a project? I think this, this is the time it should be last year or the other, twenty nineteen. I was shooting for for Zanaco. Mm. The pictures are not even out yet, okay? Eh? Like it's been a year plus and they, they don't even allow me to post them. <laughs> this shoot was was everything. It was like it was similar to the one that I had in Dubai. Mm. Where uh, I was with Malik, I'm sure you know Malik. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Know yeah, yeah. Yeah, there was uh, this stylist on set, there was a creative director, there was a makeup artist, there was a, me, my only job was just moving the lights as well. This is still my assistant to move the lights that side. I would, I would love to work like that. I think that shoot was the best that I've done so far. Wow. I wish I could, I, I would share the, the, the images anytime soon. I hope Zanako will allow me. But those, that, those pictures, 
Woo! I right. love that. I loved everything about that shoot. I think for me that was the the most memorable shoot I've ever had. Uh, also, I like the way I work with uh, EMI as well, mm. because when it usually comes with a plan for shoots, he always sends you these these plans and these concepts uh, maybe a week before, so that you know what you're supposed to do on that shoot. I, I would love to be in, in such an environment. Wow, that's too dope. Uh, Tony, yeah. thank you so much, man, for being a part of this podcast today. Well, I'm, I'm really grateful to have you. Um, I don't take it lightly. I think you're, <laughs> you're, you're an industry I'm leader. Um, um, thank you very much. And I, I'm excited to see young... I'm a big fan of creatives, uh, even though in my yeah, faith... I'm, I'm not. I'm challenges a, on Facebook. Say, Tony, I'm coming for your neck. <laughs> you see me? I'm out here, fam. I'm out here, bro. You yeah. know? <laughs> yeah, really appreciate Really appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tony, thank you yeah. so much once again for being with thank us today. Um, once yeah. again, thank you so much, everyone, for watching the Culture Shock podcast. Um, remember what to do. Subscribe, like, comment, share, and join us next week thank you so much to our guest tony uh who's been with us um his handles will be on in the in the in the comments below uh we'll check him out on instagram check him out on facebook in fact check him out everywhere he's global right now right so tony once again thank you uh and thank, thank you, you everyone for being with us uh culture shock africa podcast we are out see you next time